so I had a completely empty tank and I filled it up I literally was on low fuel and I filled it up $35 put 16 gallons in of premium that's 93 octane $35 you know how cheap that is compared to what it's been in perspective two months ago when premium was still three dollars and about three dollars and seventy three dollars and eighty cents a gallon if I had filled up it would have cost me about an extra twenty five dollars to fill up that's crazy the thing is as great as it is to fill up on $35 on premium I'm uh, I'm wondering when it's going to crash and I mean crash the other way to the point where gas shoots back up and it's easy to keep buying gas cheap like this but eventually it's gonna go back up it's just the way that it is but for now it just feels awesome to uh, to actually be able to fill up for thirty-five dollars. That's crazy. And my tank was completely empty. I had waited as long as I possibly could because gas just keeps on falling, and there's no point in paying more. And I realized that uh, there's some of you out there who say, "Oh, you let the gas go down too low. It just put so much more stress on the fuel pump." Yeah, you know, that's true to an extent, but. They, uh, they design the tanks these days that, uh, you know, you got swiveled, uh, swivel pickups and so on, especially for the performance versions. And, uh, you know, I don't like to run it down that low, but uh, sometimes you know, I kind of have to. So I have this craving for uh, a bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit. You can call me fat if you want to. I don't care. I actually haven't been to fast food restaurants probably in the last two weeks simply because I've been so busy and we've been, you know, putting some extra money into gas and so on for my wife's car and for the people who were helping us move. So kind of held back on that stuff. But now I can finally fill up. I bought this car not so that I could pussyfoot around town. I bought this car so that I could hear that V8, so that I could feel that V8. And I realize it's no Corvette and there's somebody's going to chime in and say, oh, but my GT500 or whatever, uh, you know, I realize that. There's a lot of cars out there that have way more power than this. But you have to realize that this car was marketed to a family sedan type family with a dad who wanted to have more power than a normal family sedan would put out. And yes, I know that the G8 really took that up a notch over the uh, Grand Prix that's fine but it also was marketed to the same group you've got uh, a family sedan that has a well over a 400 horsepower motor in it <coughs> or at least the GXP did and um, you know that's what it was marketed to you could get the kids and whatever and still have 0 to 60s you know in the sub 5 second uh, area so I mean when you when you break it down this car was meant to tailor towards those who wanted power but also practicality of the front wheel drive and the sedan practicality I mean I can get both my kids in the back comfortably get a lot of stuff in the trunk comfortably and you know, I can have my whole family hauling in this thing just fine and still be able to hit the highway you know like it's nothing so it's uh it's really great having this car and i absolutely love it and i've gone over this before how much i love this car it's just great um so i've been more than happy with this thing yes i've been scared a couple times with the last couple videos that i've had on about my warranty work and so on you know i've been scared about that i still have to get it in for transmission problems i I've figured out that the harder that I drive it or the more that I'm driving around town, the more it does it. So instead of just parking it overnight and then having the guy, the technician, drive it around the block once, I'm actually going to drive it hard, not even let 
the uh, not even turning the engine off. I'm gonna call him ahead of time, have a technician come out, <coughs> and I'll drive the technician around so that he can experience what I'm experiencing. Um, because when I had it in, you guys know, when I actually had it in, they didn't find a problem with the transmission. And it usually doesn't have a problem when it's cold. But when it gets heated up, you know, when the transmission fluid, um, damn it, starts, uh, you know, hitting that mark, um, you know, around 150, 160, then it's really prominent. It really is. <coughs> so anyway, I know I rambled on quite a bit, kind of a long trip. It's a little bit longer from work to home now than it used to be. Um, but I'm just glad that I've got internet back. I'm glad I can get videos up. I'm going to start working on my solar panel installation here real soon. i got a new tape measure to do that with. Um, more things i got to do to the car, like the speaker and so on. So be looking forward to that. But like winter, always, it's harder to get videos in the wintertime. So take care, guys.